the pilgrims accompanying the army at kunjpura had planned to visit kurukshetra a holy site of mahabharat war 30 miles northwest from kunjpura sadashiv rao also had plans to ally with the six from the sarhind area to form a strong defense against the returning afghan army in the near future with this objective sadashiv rao and the maratha army marched northwest and perhaps further east to ally with ala singh jhat while leaving further north sadashiv rao sent about 1000 horsemen on the route to delhi to keep a constant vigil they were instructed to report back if any enemy movement was noticed Ahmed Shah Abdali and his army started crossing the Yamuna River at the Gauripura crossing near Bagpat. On 26th of October 1760, the Afghan army successfully moved their artillery across the river pulled by some elephants. The artillery was the last to cross the river. They first set up camp at Sonipat. Ahmed Shah Abdali immediately sent Shah Pasan Khan to hunt for any outpost and spies in the vicinity. Accompanied by Najib Khan's local men and 5000 strong army, Shah Pasan Khan encountered the small Maratha detachment guarding the fords and crossings. The Marathas could not stand this sudden Afghan attack. Meanwhile, the principal Maratha army which was marching north from Kunjpura was now camped at Tarauri. Here they received the dreadful news that Afghan army had crossed the Yamuna River and was now stationed between them and Delhi. Exactly where had the Afghans crossed the river was not yet known. Sadashiv Rao then immediately sent another battalion led by Bajihari Supekar to locate this enemy and ordered his army to march south towards Delhi at once. On 28th of October, Bajihari Supekar and a group of riders from the Shinde army were patrolling the road south. They had stopped in route to feed their horses. This area was densely forested. Suddenly from the thick bushes some Afghan men appeared and attacked the Maratha men. Four of Bajihari's men were pursued and killed by the Afghans. The rest somehow managed to escape. Some of them who were captured were released by the Afghan soldiers after confiscating their horses and weapons. The surviving men quickly rushed north to report the incident and location of the army to Sadashiv Rao. The Maratha army now had the location of the Afghan army. It was now time for them to decide their route and their strategy. Now that the Marathas knew their location, the Afghan army rapidly advanced north to reduce the distance between them and the Maratha army. They reached at Samalkha. Their next stop was going to be at Panipat. The Marathas were also moving south with their large army. Ultimately, both the armies came into each other's sight. The Maratha vanguard withdrew as soon as they noticed Afghan camps at a distance. The Marathas decided to camp in a nearby city, the city of Panipat. The two armies were only 5 miles apart. Ibrahim Khan Gandhi's men from Maratha army now started digging trenches. The soil pulled out was used to build sand hills and to install their artillery. Sadashiv Rao Bhau who had set out to face Abdali on 14th March 1760 had finally come face to face with the Afghan army led by Ahmed Shah Abdali after 8 months it was not possible for both the armies to advance any further in fact the afghan army had advanced so close to the maratha camp that the artillery shots fired by the maratha cannons fell beyond the afghan camps the two armies were positioned such that they blocked each other's route home The Marathas continued to receive supplies from Kunjpura and had their supply line established from the north. Abdali was receiving supplies from the Duab across the river. It was necessary for the Marathas to cut the Afghan supply routes. Despite sending many letters and suggestions, Govind Pan Bundela was moderately successful at his job. He by now had collected a few lakh rupees and some bushels of grains which he was planning to send to Sadashiv Rao. If the Marathas wanted Abdali to propose for a truce, his supply lines had to be cut. It was evident that the winner of this battle would be determined only by the scarcity of supply in the opponent's camp. At this time, the markets in Abdali's camp sold about 1.5 to 2 kilos of grain for a rupee, while the markets in the Maratha camp, a rupee got you 15 kilos of grain. Due to the established supply lines and the ample provisions at Kunjpura, there was prosperity in the Maratha camp. A few days passed. The two armies were stationed facing each other, but there was no action. It was a scary silence before a storm. 
The Marathas were now preparing to attack. Malla Rao Holkar was of the opinion that guerrilla warfare should be used by breaching perhaps through the center camps. Ibrahim Khan Gardi objected because doing so would have left the artillery and Gardi troops behind for a certain death. This was a great war of wits. Both the factions were waiting for the other to make a mistake. The Marathas at this time were also preparing their artillery by gathering lead and saltpeter. About 150,000 people were sitting in a radius of about 20 miles. The Banjara merchants who provisioned the camps with supplies somehow managed to deliver, perhaps by taking unconventional routes via the forests. The first major clash took place on 7th November 1760. It was led by the impatient Najib Khan Rohila, who attacked on the right side of the Maratha camp. When the Marathas engaged with the Rohilas, Shuja Uddawla's men came to the aid of the Rohilas. Marathas resorted to gunfire from within their trenches. About 400 Rohilas were killed in the gunfire. Taking advantage of the retreating enemy at sundown, the Maratha soldiers managed to loot 150 horses from the Rohilas. About 30 to 40 Maratha men were killed in this skirmish. Now by the end of November, there was a scarcity of money. Nana Fadnavis was in the camp at this time. He notes that at this time, Ibrahim Khan Gardi's Pathans were being paid regularly their salaries. The Gardi driven artillery was to be the decisive difference between the two sides. Malara Holkar, who had been advising to open the front by attacking with guerrilla warfare from the beginning, was now furious with the Gardis. Despite not giving salary regularly, his men were ready to fight, and on the other hand, the Gardis, who did not want it to take a lead in the battle, were being compensated. Eventually, Sadashirao agreed with Malara Holkar. He permitted him to charge ahead and open a route. Malara Holkar then led his army and attacked Shahwali Khan's camp in an attempt to break through. But as Afghans came to the aid of their wazir, the Marathas had to retreat. In this raid, about 1,000 Maratha men were killed. Malara Holkar tried his best but could not manage to break through the enemy's camp. Meanwhile, in the north, Dilawar Khan, the son of Najabat Khan who had managed to escape from Kunjpura when the Marathas captured the fort, managed to cross Yamuna and attack and capture the fort of Kunjpura. The supply for the Marathas coming from Kunjpura was now terminated. Sadashira now assigned Vithal Shivdev the duty to look for supplies. Vithal Shivdev then marched to Garnala to make the arrangements for supplies and livestock from Garnala to Panipat. Until now, the letters were still being sent south. It used to take somewhere between 25 and 40 days for a letter to reach Pune from Panipat, and perhaps about similar time for a response. Now both the camps were stationed for about a month. On 19th of November 1760, the Marathas raided and stole some livestock and cannons from the Afghan army. It was led by Ibrahim Khan Gardi's brother, Fateh Ali Khan Gardi. Abdali's supplies were still being managed from across the Yamuna. Sadashira was repeatedly requesting Govindpan Bundela to cut off his supplies. It was a full moon on 22nd of November 1760. Wazir Shahwali Khan was patrolling with his army southwest of Panipat. They had stopped near a well for some water. Seeing the Afghan troops so close to the camp, a young Jankoji Shinde suddenly attacked them. Shahwali Khan was bemused by the sudden raid. He did not engage and immediately retreated to his camp. But Jankoji and his men were determined to annihilate the enemy. They pursued and attacked the fleeing army. A bloody battle ensued. Sonji Bhapkar and Balwantra Mehendale were sent as reinforcements, but they did not arrive on time. Perhaps if they had come on that day, they could have easily defeated and managed to kill the wazir. About 1000 Durani soldiers and 500 helpers from the enemy camp were injured. The Maratha men looted 500 odd horses from the Afghan men. Shetiba Kharde and Satwoji Falke from the Shinde army were killed during this combat. That night, a triumphant Maratha army returned to the camp. Govindpan Bundela was frequently raiding Abdali supply lines across the river. This caused frustration to the Afghans. Abdali was now irritated by these raids by the Marathas on the west of the river and Govindpan Bundela looting his supplies on the east of the river. He needed to stall this shifting scales. He decided to move his camp near the river for now. As a result, his supply route could be changed. More so, he would move away from the rampant Maratha raids 
happening every now and then. With Abdali's change in approach, now it was up to the Marathas to answer his new strategy. Will the Marathas be able to take advantage of Abdali's move and break this deadlock advancing south towards Delhi? Or will they attack the retreating Abdali and land a finishing blow? Will Govindpan Bundela force Abdali to request for a peace by cutting off his supplies? Only destiny had the answers.